Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar for MIST R2 Manager Visa Check Integration. My name is Binod Silwal. I'll be your integration consultant for this integration and in MESH group as well. Um, so in today's webinar, I'll talk about the Visa Check Integration feature that we have uh, recently implemented for all your R2 Manager platforms, uh, its capabilities, uh, how to use it, and uh, more to go. So if you have any questions in the meantime, while I'm doing the presentation, uh, please feel free to uh, write your message or questions in the chat box. We'll compile at the end of the meeting and get back to you uh, separately. Um, if we get enough time, then I'll also try to uh, answer them today itself. But if not, then I'll uh, definitely get back to you with an answer. We will also share this recording and the, the slides that I'll present um, after we finish the meeting. Uh, so yeah, if you have anything, just uh, reach out to us. And once again, thank you for your time today. Uh, so let's get started. So in today's webinar, I will be uh, discussing about the overview of the integration, uh, what the feature does, um, how to do the configuration and setup. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the access and permission uh, introduced for this feature, um, the tier information, uh, the price and the package, and uh, the number of visa checks limit, and so on. Uh, I'll also talk about the few uh, visa check filters that we have for the visa check page, uh, some of the relevant icons for this integration. Uh, I'll go uh, in a bit detail for the visa check process, and I'll also show you around for the log and report we have for this feature. So, um, if you have any questions, again, uh, just um, feel free to drop a message. Make sure you write your name and your college name as well so that we know uh, how and who, to, who do we reach out back. Okay, um, so let's uh, talk about the overview. Um, so this integration is powered by Visho. So by that, I mean, we have partnered with Visho. It's, an, it's a third party API provider. So uh, MIST and Visho has a partnership for offering this integration in the market. Uh, so this integration comes with very easy setup. So there's no complicated uh, setup and configuration required. All we need is uh, your email account details. Uh, this integration works based on the fast API verification uh, method. So that means uh, the visa check responses are quick, instant. Uh, if not instant, then it will be within a matter of uh, seconds. Uh, this, uh, having said that, this also depends on the queue in the department's uh, API. So uh, we obviously we call the API for the department, and then they will queue our request and gives us back the response. So it also depends on the queue. So ideally, it uh, the response is received in a matter of seconds. If not, then you will have further options to get the API response whenever you want. I'll talk about that as well. Uh, the feature is already available in your platform. So if you uh, currently also, if you go to admin configuration setup, you will see a visa check configuration section where you can do the configuration. And if you go to offers and offers tab, there will be a, a page called visa check. So you, if you go there, you're already, um, you, you're good to do the visa check. So there's no activation required. It's already available. So you can start uh, at any point of time if you have the valid email account for your organization. Uh, this integration comes in various tiers. So I'll talk about the available tier or package for this integration in, uh, in the later slides. Uh, this integration allows you to do the visa check for individual uh, records, or you can also do the bulk visa checks. So uh, bulk visa check will allow you to do up to 20 records at a time, provided that you have the tier available for 20 visa checks. Um, the visa check can be done for both offers and students. Uh, most likely, uh, the the offers are the more are the records where you will you would need to do the visa checks. But also for the students who want to extend the course or who wants to add a new course to them, uh, you might need to uh, do a visa check for them to see if they, they are eligible uh, to be offered a new course or not. So this is just to uh, get on top of the compliance that you will only of courses to the students, also students who, who have the valid visa. Um, so first thing is configuration. So as I mentioned, all you need is the EMEA account uh, username and password. So ideally, you will have your uh, provider's EMEA account, uh, which you will use to log in to the EMEA account. The same username and password you can configure in uh, RT Manager system. You will see under admin configuration setup, the page called visa configuration. 
so this page will be only available for you as admin users. Obviously, this is uh, because EMI account is a sensitive information and only the authorized person is should be allowed to do the configuration. Uh, as admin users can add, uh, update, or remove the EMI account at any point of time, and there's no restriction. So for doing a successful visa check, uh, this configuration must be done and this must be correct as well. So you will also need to um, agree to the terms and conditions by Vivo. So these terms and conditions are hosted by the department itself, which uh, basically uh, ask, asks for your consent to uh, allow a third party application to use your email account details to access the visa check uh, or do the visa check as well. Um, so user must accept the terms and conditions, as I just said. Uh, and one thing to note is that your organization EME account must have this uh, visa entitlement verification online Vivo service enabled. So you can see it under your My Services under the uh, EME account. If you don't have this service, you can go to request additional service section and uh, ask or request for this visa check service. So if you don't have this one, then the API won't work because obviously your email account no, is not eligible to do the visa checks. So you can submit a request uh, to the department. Um, ideally, they will uh, provide you the approval within a couple of business days. Uh, so this is entirely outside, outside of our system. So you should be managing these things from your uh, email account as well. Uh, in terms of access and permission in MEST platform, um, so as I mentioned before, as admin users can uh, do the configuration and they can use the visa check feature without any restriction. However, uh, if you want to assign a particular user role or even a particular user for that uh, function, which is the visa check, you will have a permission called visa check and it can be assigned to the users and roles. Uh, only the person who has this permission enabled will be able to do the visa checks. Other people or other staffs can also see these options. Uh, these options, I mean the visa check page under the offers, but they won't be allowed to do the visa checks. If you if they attempt to do the visa check, system will prompt an error saying you don't have a permission enabled. So yeah, yeah, we can control the access and people who want who can do the visa check on for your organization's behalf. Um, so let's talk about the tier information now. So. Um, for all your platforms, currently you are under a free tier, so it's already enabled. If you see uh, offers visa check page under the uh, tier information, you will see this icon here. So under here, you can see you, you can do 10 visa checks per month, which is already there. You can start using from now onwards as well. Uh, if you have not uh, seen this already, you can simply go to and uh, check in your platform. Uh, so by default, you will be allowed to do 10 free visa checks per month. But if obviously, if you want to increase these accounts, if you want to do up to 50 visa checks, we have the standard uh, tier. And if you want to do up to 150 visa checks, we have the premium tier. Uh, if you have any other uh, requirements, like more than 150 and so on, we can uh, come up with a custom tier package as well. So each uh, uh, tier will be valid for the particular month. and. Uh, on the start of the next month, the tier will reset, and then you will also be able to do uh, like from from the beginning, the visa check counter will reset to zero, and then you can do for the visa checks up to the limit that is provided to you. Um, so we are working on pay as you go as well, but but I'll talk about that uh, in my last slide for this presentation. So yeah, stick to that. So now let's go to the visa check uh, filters, the page itself. Uh, so it can be found under the offers tab. There's a page called visa check. Uh, you will see the filters uh, like campus. Uh, there are a few statuses like checked, uh, sorry, not checked, completed, failure, uh, request sent, and so on. So you can do the checks based on that. Ideally, by default, this uh, filter is reset to not checked. Uh, and then you can search all the parameters like offer ID or course, start date, agents, and so on. So you can uh, do these filters and browser records. You can also filter by the stage. Um, stage is our offer and student. You can select the records from here as well. Uh, by default, resident students are excluded from the search list, obviously because they don't need the visa check. Um, but if there are any onso and offshore -so students or applicants, they will be listed under this page based on the filters that you use. So, um, yeah, you can uh, use the filters, you can get the re required list and do the visa checks. 
some of the icons relevant to this integration. So I'm going to just uh, go on a very high level for this one. You'll see this bulb icon, which will be on, uh, to show or hide the tier information, uh, this icon here. Uh, there will be a check visa uh, icon as well. So this is the icon which you will actually trigger to do the visa check request. So after clicking this one, you will send the API request for the visa check. You will see a calendar uh, icon as well. So what this does is it will give you the history of the visa checks done for that particular record. So let's say if you have done visa check three times for a particular record, then it will give you the uh, details of all those three attempts. Uh, there will be a um, icon called refresh status. So this only appears when uh, the visa check category is request sent. Um, so you can do the, click this icon to face the API response. This comes handy when you don't get back the API response instantly. And then you want to go and click this one, then it will bring back all the pending records that is not coming from the API. Uh, there will be an icon on the gray tick uh, under the offers uh, profile page or the student's profile page. What it means is um, uh, the visa check has not been done before for that particular record, or even if it was done, then the successful visa check has not been received back. So once the successful visa check is uh, response is received back, the icon will turn into green. And you can also click uh, the back button from the visa check page to go back to the relevant offers or the students if you are going to that visa check front page from those sections as well. So now uh, let's talk about the visa check process. So under this uh, main page called visa check, you can uh, list out the records. You can select one or multiple records. Uh, so obviously, if you are on the free tier, you will be allowed to do up to 10 visa checks per, uh, per month. So if you select, let's say, 11 records, then system will prompt a message saying that you're not allowed to do 11 checks because of the free tier there. So in that case, if you want to increase more, you can reach out to us for more subscription. Uh, so uh, ideally, you will be able to select the records, click on confirm and do the uh, uh, visa check by clicking this check visa icon. So the confirmation message is important because uh, it will uh, give you uh, one additional layer to confirm if actually you want to do the visa check for the selected records or not, provided that uh, some records are already um, done for visa checks. I mean, uh, they are, the visa checks has already been done for those records, then you might not want to do it again and again. So just to, uh, because, each successful visa check is counted towards the uh, limit and also will be billed. So that's why uh, this is to uh, make you aware that the selected records potentially will be uh, used for billing. So you just need to make sure you select the required records only. For example, currently it's not checked. So ideally you will go for visa checking for these records. But if it's, let's say, completed or success already, then you might not need to do the visa check again. So it's just to provide you the additional layer of confirmation. Uh, depending upon the API response, uh, so system will give you the message after the request is sent, uh, like uh, you can see under completed or request sent status to view the response. So completed uh, will have the, the API response, actual API response from uh, Bevo as well. Uh, there will be one more status called failure in case of any errors. Uh, and the request sent, which is like uh, we send the request, but we never receive the response back. So in that case, you can simply go to request send and then uh, do the refresh status. Uh, as I mentioned before, any visa check um, a limit after, uh, like beyond your uh, tier or the limit, the uh, system will uh, restrict you from doing the further visa checks. So uh, completed or failure status means a valid response received from API, so which I mentioned before as well. So the, if the status is complete, it could be, let's say the success, that means visa check has been done successfully and we received the valid visa response. Or let's say it could mean something else like the person doesn't exist in vivo with the provided details. So the, the system, the API gives back the relevant response and then you can also see what the um, response actually means. You know, for, for this case, it means vivo cannot identify the person. The provided details, for example, date of birth, uh, passport number or country of birth doesn't match with the vivo so that you have to update the system records as well. Uh, 
the category called request send means API response is not received. I mentioned it already. So you can um, use this filter called request send. And under this filter, you will see an icon called refresh status. So once you click this refresh status icon, then you will be, uh, the system will uh, fetch all the API response from the API itself and then moves it to the completed status or the failure status depending upon the response. Um, so further elaboration of what the statuses mean and if they are uh, like counted towards the billable uh, visa check records or not. So let's um, go in a bit detail. So completed could either mean uh, Vivo account no access. So this means that uh, you have a valid uh, EMI account, but uh, the service for Vivo check is not enabled yet. So as I mentioned before, you have to request to the department under the request additional services. And then once you have the Vivo uh, service enabled for your EMI account, this um, error should go away. The other one would mean that person not found. So the provided details are um, provided details for this uh, visa check is the, uh, the passport, the date of birth of the student or the applicant, and their country of birth. Uh, so if either of these doesn't match with Vivo records, then it will throw an error like Vivo person not found. Um, and the other one is success. So in this case, uh, the provided details was right. Your email account doesn't have any issue. You have the required uh, service enabled and uh, the student or applicant uh, visa exists based on the parameters provided. And we the API provides back the valid visa response. Let's say for an example, student visa 500, uh, student can study indefinitely. Those kind of information will be returned back. In terms of failure, um, it could mean like your login details are is incorrect. For example, your provided username or provided password is incorrect, or even it could mean that the password is expired already. So you have to make sure that the user credentials are correct and up to date. So if that's that, then there won't be any issues like this one. But if you see this error, you, you know that uh, the credentials or email account details has some issue. So you have to fix that. And in terms of request sent, there won't be any response code because uh, technically uh, no response has been received from API yet. Uh, so you, you should simply go to this status and hit request uh, refresh status, which is this one, as I mentioned before. Then once that's done, then uh, the API will fetch the actual response. And then the actual response could be uh, either of the above these four statuses. So among all these three, uh, the success one is counted towards the uh, billing. So your visa check count, which is men, uh, mentioned under this visa checks uh, limit here. So this is only counted when uh, we receive the successful message, uh, which is this one, or uh, the status is request sent. So the request sent is just to um, do a placeholder for that visa check. So let's say if you send three records and then three are under request send, that means we have not received the response. So those three count will be counted towards the visa check. But then after you do the refresh status, if um, it's success, then three is counted. If it's not success, then the three is reset back. So only the successful, ideally at the end of the day, only the success uh, status is used uh, to do the billing or it's only counted towards the uh, billable visa checks. You can see the visa check history with this icon here, um, which will be there for each and every record if the visa check has been done, regardless of the response, if it's successful or not. So uh, the visa check uh, will have uh, the information like response code, if it's success or not. Uh, it could be a Vivo login error. It could be Vivo person not found and so on. Uh, what the uh, detail actually means. Uh, so if it's success, then it means that visa check has been successful. What the visa type is returned, returned for that uh, record, uh, it will give the visa subclass. For the students, it might give you 500. For the tourist visa, it might give you 600 and so on. Uh, so visa name, what is the actual visa name based uh, on the department's classification? The visa details, what visa allows you to do. So currently for this 408, it, it gives uh, the... Uh, entitlement for work um, and and so on. So ideally for your cases, it will have a student uh, visa 500, unlimited study and study entitlements and so on. It will also have the visa grant date and the visa expiry date as well. Uh, you can see all this information on the visa check history. Um, so if you have done a visa check for any record, let's say there was an error or person was not found, you do the, uh, you correct the data in the system and then you again do the visa check, then 
in that case, there are multiple attempts done for that uh, particular record. In that case, system records each and every activity uh, with the valid response and valid date timestamp along with the user details so that you can see it under the visa check history how many times the visa check has been done, who did that, and what the response was received. So this is kind of a, a audit trail for that particular record in case you need it for your audit purpose as well. Uh, so for, you can uh, see the visa check uh, information under the students uh, or offer profile as well. So it, there will be an icon under the uh, alongside the visa type uh, section in the system. So what, uh, this ideally means that the visa check hasn't been done before, or even if it has been done, then the success message was not never received. Like that means valid uh, visa check was not been done. So in that case, you can simply click this icon and uh, it will take you to the visa check page again uh, it, by pre-populating all the records for that particular uh, record. And then you can do the visa check from here. You can also click this back button to go back to the same offer page again, uh, where you came from uh, to this uh, visa check page. So once the visa check is done here, let's say the uh, response is success. And in that case, it will turn green. It will give you the details when it was last checked. And uh, to see the details, simply click this one and it will take you to the same visa check page uh, and give you the response details. You can click this icon again to do the uh, visa check history. Uh, again, the green icon will only be there if the visa check has been successful. So if there was any error, there was any, uh, if the person was not found or the image details were incorrect, then it will still uh, remain uh, gray. Uh, but as this one, but if it's a success, then uh, the, the icon will turn green. So in that case, it, it's kind of a badge uh, under the student profile saying that the valid visa is there for that student. Uh, similarly, for the, uh, this was for the offer profile, sorry, and this is now for the student, similar story. The student will also have this gray icon here. Uh, simply, you can click it here. Uh, no visa check has been done before. Uh, you can click there. You can go to the visa check page, and then if the success message is returned, uh, then it will turn green again. You can see the relevant um, visa check response as well. So uh, same information is also main, maintained under the offer communication log, or if it's for students, it's under the student diary log. So it will uh, record the attempts done for the visa check and what the, value, uh, what the response from API was. It will record who did the check at what time and what response was received. This is just to, again, this is just to uh, make sure that uh, we record information wherever possible so that it's easier to track later. And then you can see the information from multiple pages in the system. Uh, for this integration, uh, there is a log which is very important uh, in terms of uh, like tracking who did the configuration change. As EMEA account is a sensitive uh, information, we need to make sure we track uh, who did the who inserted the record, who updated, or who deleted. Obviously, in the log, the username and password used for that configuration is uh, encrypted. So. Uh, it is um, it, it is like just to make sure that it's secure and then no one else can access the username password just based on the logs. Uh, you can uh, browse based on the two dates, see who has done the configuration at what time and so on. So um, the log is maintained there. In terms of report, uh, under the student services, there will be a report called uh, visa check request between two dates. So you can run this report between two dates and see all the visa check activities done uh, between those dates. So that can either include the success, failure, completed, not completed, request sent, and all the statuses between those two days. So this will, this is a kind of a, uh, his, uh, history between two days for all the visa check activities done so far. You can either check it from the individual record section, which which was this, as I mentioned, or you can do check uh, for all the records at once from this particular report. So uh, information are maintained in the report as well. So this comes handy when you want to um, cross verify what information was checked, who did, and between two days, how many records were checked, and so on. So last piece of information for today's webinar is uh, about few of the features that we are ex extending. So uh, initially I mentioned for the tier setup that you will be allowed to do up to 50 or 150 or 10 for free in, in case of free uh, visa checks. But we are also introducing a pay-as-you-go uh, 
uh, method. So uh, in, uh, essentially, when you uh, reach out, reach the limit of your current tier. So let's say if you are on a standard tier, you reach 50 limits and you want to do further more, then we will we can allow you to do let's say 55 or 60 uh, visa checks for that particular month. So obviously the the additional visa checks will be uh, charged based on the contract that we do with the clients. Uh, but uh, this pay as you go will also be introduced in the, in the coming release. There will be one more report uh, for the finance. This is purely to see how many uh, successful visa checks has been done. So ideally the report will be same as uh, this report, but uh, because this report has all the information, including completed failure um, or any other errors as well, uh, the new report will only have the success records so that if you run this report, uh, if it says 55, then uh, you know that only you, you charge for that 55 visa checks. So, uh, uh, one last information that I want to mention here is, let's say uh, for this visa check uh, tier, uh, so you are under a standard uh, tier, so you you are technically allowed to do 50 visa checks, but if you only do 45, then five visa checks are not carried over for the next month. So it ends at the end of the month. Next month, uh, it will reset with 50 check again. So if you don't use uh, all the visa checks, then it doesn't get carried over for the next uh, month. So this is how the tier is uh, maintained in the system. And this is how the integration will work. Uh, this very uh, straightforward integration, nothing uh, complicated. Uh, so it's readily available for you. You can start using from now itself. Uh, you can do trial with the free tier. If you want to subscribe to more, then you can let us know. Or if you have any other questions apart from this one, uh, please feel free to reach out to support at miscoop.com.au or you can also give us a call back. We can uh, book another uh, detailed demo or we can take you for, to the further steps. So uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop in the chat box as well uh, and we'll reach out to you. Uh, for now, that's all from my side and thank you for your time today for the webinar. You have a good day ahead. Thank you.